everyone. It's Doreen and Melissa. One of the frequently asked questions that we receive is about yoga. People who are newly converted to Christianity or who are back into Christianity want to make sure that everything they're doing is according to God's will and biblical. And that's exactly what we do want to make sure of. So yoga, just kind of an interesting background. Um, I practiced it myself for over 20 years And I didn't even know this, but the word yoga means union. And it's not just any kind of union. It's union with the infinite Brahman, the Hindu concept of God. It's union of yourself with this Hindu God. I'm reading now from gotquestions.org. This God is not a literal being, but it's an impersonal spiritual substance that is one with nature and the universe. This view is called pantheism. And it's the belief that God is in everything and that reality consists only of the universe and nature. Because everything is God, according to this um, view, the yoga philosophy makes no distinction between us, humans, and God. You can see already that it's opening yourself up. And as a side note that I have repented for, and I want to apologize if you were one of my students, uh, I used to have a yoga teacher on staff of my uh, my classes that I did, my psychic development classes. And part of the requirement to get certified in these classes was you had to participate in these yoga classes that we offered as part of the class. And the reason is that yoga does open you up to receiving psychic impressions. And so that should be a red flag warning to Christians. Again, I've repented from that, but the point is that yoga... Uh, makes you more sensitive and intuitive. And intuition is a gift from God. It's one of the spiritual gifts. In the book of Job, God says he's the author of intuition in some translations. In other translations, he says the inner wisdom. Uh, And so we have intuition. The question is, who's controlling your intuition? Is it from God or is it from the devil? And that's a really good point to make too, because I think a lot of people that don't believe in the devil would always think that anything in their tuition is to be trusted, you know, and I, I never actually practiced yoga. I never was uh, too much into the, the whole teachings and spiritual side of yoga. I always thought it was just an exercise. Um, honestly, I, even when I was in the new age, uh, I had no idea. I actually learned more about it being new age after I left <laughs> the new age, actually more in the last two years. And I did not realize, and I think this is why a lot of Christians don't understand the issue that a lot of ex-New Agers have. I had no idea that it was so entrenched in New Age teachings, that it's basically, what is it, like a Hindu concept? Um, It is. It goes back to Eastern concepts. Um, Yogananda, who was a Eastern teacher, brought it over to the U.S. and to the West um, in in an effort to enlighten us, and it just stayed. And, and it's, an, it's a very westernized version of what is actually practiced in India and other Eastern cultures. So yoga we have here isn't exactly what you'd find if you'd say go to a, an ashram in India. But it's enough that it's of concern to those of us who are Christian. One of the reasons after I converted that I stopped going to yoga studios was because of the many deity statues mm-hmm. and images yeah. and uh, symbology in the yoga studios. It's, it's very, not only pantheistic, but polytheistic. Polytheistic means many gods and goddesses. And I used to think, and again, I've repented for this, and I apologize that I did teach this deception that I was deceived from. I used to think the more friends that you have in heaven, the better. So I would call on Jesus, Holy Spirit, but I'd also call on all the Hindu gods and the Buddhist gods and goddesses. And I just really thought, and and all my dead relatives, I thought the more friends in heaven you have, the better. Oh, was I wrong? (laughs) Or was I deceived? And so I can't go to a yoga studio because these deities are there. And it's not blatant worship. It's not like you're on a blanket bowing down to a Buddha statue, but it's, it's, Uh, emulating them. So some of the poses in yoga are named for the different deities. And, you know, there's, 
there's a Krishna pose, for instance, that you do. And, and, and the Sanskrit names behind all of the different poses, when you really get deep into yoga, um, are nods to the different gods and goddesses too. So it's not just exercise. It's really a way of life. Uh, it's a, a lifestyle that has a very spiritual component. But again, you have to ask, what spirit is it spiritually? Is there a way, do you think, that you could separate the exercises from the spirituality? Well, that's what the holy yoga movement is trying to do. The holy yoga movement is purported to be Christian yoga. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying the Sanskrit names that you do in a, uh, Sanskrit's an ancient Eastern language uh, that you would normally say during yoga. Most people have heard namaste, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, the holy yoga movement is using scriptures, you know, they're saying verses while they're doing this, the same poses. <laughs> So let me read you what gotquestions.org uh, says about holy yoga. They said, holy yoga or Christian yoga is a movement that combines yoga with Christian practice. Um, the origins of yoga are undoubtedly pagan. Back down, both sides of your left foot, come up back to your crescent. Bring your right knee to the mat, release the right and top of the right foot. Inhale, arms come overhead. Exhale, hands come back down. Come up to your hands. Ball down to the right foot, left foot comes to meet the right, blow through your chaturanga. Modifying at any portion you need to. Inhale, look forward, walk or jump, top of the mat, forward to ball, take an exhale. <sighs> Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, full. Bend your knees here, come back to your chair, grab your weight. Use your weights to prop yourself up. Right foot stays forward this time. Left foot back. Crescent lunge, left side. Inhale, bring your weights to heart center. Woo! Get your feet set in your crescent. Right hand comes down to your knee as your back foot blades to your warrior two feet. The question becomes, can, like you asked, Melissa, can yoga be transformed into something of spiritual value to Christians? Uh, it says yoga's focus on the self is inherently unbiblical, and it is very self-conscious. You know, it's all about noticing everything about yourself. The Bible never tells us to focus on ourselves, rather we are to die to ourselves and follow Jesus. I know that's a shocking thought to someone who's still in the new age. Stay with us because <laughs> we've got more for this. Connection with God does not come through yogic meditation, concentration, or a dissociation of one's senses from oneself. Holy yoga advances the notion that breath control and the position of the body are somehow related to spiritual and mental health. There's nothing in the Bible to suggest this, though. Teachers of holy yoga promote the practice as, of meditation as understood in New Age and Eastern mysticism. So they use yogic methods such as visualization, controlled breathing, and chanting. So what do they say? Bottom line, yoga with its roots in Hinduism is a spiritually dangerous practice. Simply changing the intent of the practice does not negate its inherent theological problems. Holy yoga's reliance on pagan notions of human's nature its linking of physicality with spirituality and its support of contemplative prayer are all reasons to avoid this practice. So we can't Christianize it. And you guys, right now, I just want to say that, you know, I know that yoga seems really cool. I mean, I did it for over 20 years. It does relax you. It does keep you limber. But check it out. There's another practice that does not have a spiritual component that also keeps you limber and can be toning, and it's called Pilates. It was invented by Joseph Pilates when um, he worked with people who were in these hospital beds, 
and he learned how they could exercise their bodies while being bedridden. And so a lot of the Pilates practices are on your back and uh, it's, you know, it's a wonderful way and a relaxing way to stretch your muscles and to keep yourself toned. And not have to do any chanting. <laughs> no chanting. I now do Pilates every day and uh, there's Pilates studios everywhere. And so if you, you know, one of the things that we hear about, Melissa, is there is yoga teachers who got convicted by Holy Spirit and they want to get out of teaching yoga, but that it's their livelihood. Yeah. And they worry, you know, how am I going to make money? What will my friends think, et cetera. And this is what we see a lot with people who convert. You and I went through that when we converted. Mm -hmm. And Pilates instructors are a viable option for Christians. You could learn how to teach people how to use the, the Cadillac and the uh, reformer and how to, you can coach them with the Pilates practices in a safe way. Hi, my name is Lily Hubbard and this is my testimony. So I am an ex New Ager. I used to be a practicing Hindu. I was a yoga teacher. I was involved in the occult, I dabbled in witchcraft, and I traveled the world seeking God, seeking truth and understanding in Eastern religion. I've been living in Thailand for the last six and a half years, and my husband is Thai, and he was raised Buddhist. But two and a half years ago, the truth found me, and the truth set me free, and I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And shortly after, my husband also gave his life to Jesus Christ, and we were baptized. And a few weeks after that, I got, found out I was pregnant, and God has blessed us in so many ways. And I have so much more peace than I ever had when I was a yoga teacher, a Hindu, and in the New Age. 